the work. Take 42. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Wowhead Weekly number 107. I want to take a minute to say thank you to everybody who is watching us live that just put up with a whole mess of technical issues nonsense. We really, really appreciate your patience. <laughs> and uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we did not have a show last week because Perk caught some sort of terrible plague, but we are here this week. Lots to talk about. Before we get into all of that, let me introduce you to Perk, my lovely co-host, Wowhead Site Manager. There she is. Hey. Hey, everyone. <laughs> so we've had Nighthold this week, and we've had the 7.2 PTR, which just came up when we started filming the show. Of course. And... Yeah, so it's a busy week, and then we also have the Lunar Festival and Call of the Scarab this weekend as well. So yeah, good mix of live stuff going on and then PTR stuff if you want to look towards the future. Yes, so much stuff. And we didn't even, I mean, we haven't even streamed since Nighthold came out. We have tons to talk about. Let's get into PTR stuff first, and then we'll talk about stuff that's on live servers. So the PTR for patch 7.2 is already up, which is insane. It's insane. 7.15 was two weeks ago, and we've already got the PTR for 7.2, which is super exciting because that patch 7.2, John Height can be quoted as saying, is the biggest patch they've ever had in World of Warcraft. So there is a lot, a lot to look forward to. And I think one of the big things that people are really, really hype about is the fact that 7.2 will introduce Legion Pathfinder, meaning that you'll be able to fly in the Broken Isles and you'll be able to earn a class mount for your character. And I made this little slideshow of all the different yep. class mounts, which is pretty nifty. So demon hunters are gonna be getting this bat guy who's got runes and he's all evil looking. Death Knights are getting this, like, it's like a frost worm almost, but there's different variations for each yeah. spec. Yeah, a few of the um, classes, it changes based on your spec. If the specs have very distinctive identities, like Death Knights and Mages, and then others have tints based on races, like Druids, uh, I believe. Yes, Druids are getting a flight form. It's sort of yep. like an owl. I feel like everybody's going to be Hedwig. And who your wizard is, I guess that's up to you. But they're very cool. My sister plays a druid. She said she wasn't a big fan of the druid forms, but I yeah. love them. I especially yeah. the white one is gorgeous. So yeah. these ones are these are based, excuse me, on your race, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And um, then, the hunter one's pretty cool because I, you have you have the ability. Well, not the mount itself, but you have the ability to quote tame beast with wings when you get the mount. So you can have little, you know, flying griffins and stuff following. That's super you around. cool. That's su well, they're they're yeah. cool mounts, anyways. Like I've heard people that saying they didn't really love them. I love the hunter mount. The mage mount is kind of like a flying disc. There's an arcane fire and frost version, which I think is awesome. I love yeah, the mount. You can appreciate it more if you actually look down at the disc and you can see all the runes. It's not yeah. just like oh, it's a disc with orbs. Like no, there's actually like unique shading and colors and stuff too. Oh yeah, the paladin mounts are horses, there are different ones. I believe these are also racial, correct? I think so. Um, also, Muffin has clarified on Twitter that apparently the paladin and warlock ones, uh, sorry, there was PTR suddenly in the main <laughs> list, um, that the um, paladin and warlock mounts had some sort of um, like footprints, like flashy footprints in the sky when oh, you were that's flying cool. around. Um, and apparently the Paladin Mount does not have wings. I think people thought that maybe it would when it would fly, like, I don't know, Crusader wings, but apparently it doesn't. It has these footprint things instead. Yep. Uh, Rogue Mount is a very popular one. It looks a lot like a raven, and there's a running joke in my guild that, of course, rogues get the best mount because the art, the lead art developer for oh, yeah. World of Warcraft Chris is Chris yeah. Robinson, who mains a rogue, but... I think, I think we're mostly kidding about that, but I'm also halfway serious. Uh, the Shaman Mount is like a giant elemental that you surf on. I have ethical dilemmas about this, but a lot of people think it's an yeah, awesome more mount. colors are coming as well with that. Yeah. And just one note about what you mentioned with Chris Robinson. Uh, I When we interviewed him, he said that they tried to have people who played um, a particular class develop the mount for that class so like everyone is taking it you know really personally yeah i love the warrior mount too this kind of like proto drake proto that has drake. a you yeah. know a vicryl kind of feel to yeah. it but all the mounts are really really cool and if you would like to see them in depth they are viewable on the wowhead model viewer correct not oh, right yeah, we have image we, we have images, images. Of all them up yeah, yeah. but they so will be at some point 
Yeah, you can see them from all different angles and like see their glow effects and yes. stuff like that. Yes, they're very um, cool. I'm excited yeah. to see the other variants of the shaman ones. Although, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I think it is unethical to put a saddle on an element. We are supposed to be working with them, not riding them like buffalo. But <laughs> I think I'm alone in those thoughts. I think that priests probably have the best mount. I just think it's so pretty. The owl cat thing that has wings and oh, it's gorgeous. I really, really like it. But what is your favorite mount? Uh, so I like the, um, I think I like the priest one, and, um, I get, yeah, I just say, like, the rogue one as well. Yeah, the um, rogue one is you know, really, really It's a good. bird. It's an evil bird. It's a rogue one. <laughs> Um, I also made a slideshow of some other models that we found in the 7.2 yeah. data. Some of these are mounts and some of these are other models. So the first thing you see here is like a Hearthstone Elemental pet, which I need. So cute. Yes. Yeah. This is a disguised Anduin that we should see in Throne of, or uh, I'm sorry, Tomb of Sargeras. Uh, that's a new Kill yeah. Jaden model. He looks very serious. And yeah. Then he's like, people are like, oh, is this like Cadgar or Moody? Like, he looks very. Yeah. yeah. We also saw an updated Succubus. We'll come back to that Illidari Pepe. These are the bear forms yeah. for the artifact weapon that were teased at BlizzCon. We now have um, access to all four of the variants, and they're pretty cool. Although there is something about this last one that reminds me of a badger. I just I just can't. Like the, the black one with yes, the Yes, yes. And then we also saw some models of ghouls, which makes me wonder how many of these models are going to be related to classes, because we saw that in the data there's going to be some class animation type things taking place. Yeah, I mean, I think the ghouls are definitely related because they, uh, the patch notes say that uh, demon hunt, not demon hunters, death knights, hunters, and balance druids are getting updates, yep. and that's the unholy ghoul model. Yep. And then uh, the mounts that you've been seeing here through this slideshow are all PvP related mounts, which is pretty cool because a lot of them have unique doodads and stuff on them or models that have been used. I think all the races are represented now. So that's Yeah, nice. yeah. And then there's also this under, this this like Zeppelin mount, which I'm going to go ahead and assume probably has something to do with engineering, but I don't really know. I was thinking Darkmoon Fair. But oh, it could be Darkmoon Fair. Wacky. And then there's also yeah. the carpet. This mount you're seeing on your screen right now. Ah, it gets too fast. It uh, It is from mm -hmm. the Tomb of Sargeras. I'll let this go through one more time in case you missed it because it's kind of slow. I'm sorry. It's kind of fast, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, but there are all of these models are viewable at wowhead.com. That succubus looks amazing. She looks yeah, really, really great. Yeah, there's more that we didn't highlight just because, you know, yep. we keep finding more and more things. Oh, there was a um, ton I didn't highlight because we didn't know where they came from or we didn't know what they were quite yet or the context of them is sort of out there. So definitely check out Wowhead to see all the models that were data mined. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up a picture just of that Pepe so that we can take a look at him for a second. Yeah. Because he is he is amazing. I didn't give him his own slide, but I will now. Uh, Illidari Pepe. So this is the Illidari Pepe model, which is based on Sepish's art, correct? Yeah, she did this super popular Demon Hunter Pepe that's purple. I wish I could just, I could hold it up, but it's it's in a frame that's stuck to the wall. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a purple Demon Hunter Pepe that has little horns and a little blindfold, and he is very evil. And so cute. Yeah, now, now hey, he is in the game, hey, and that's so cute. Hey, cool. uh, not all Demon Hunters are evil. That's a thing that we need to get out of. Stop it. Cut it out. Don't be classist. Okay, some demon hunters are doing it for the greater good, but I really hope they make a plushie of that. That was my absolute number one first thought when that came up was that better be a plushie. So again, well, there's just, the Pepe now. So right, I mean we have the ninja and we have regular Pepe, and hopefully the next one that we'll see will be demon hunter Pepe because I would love that so much. Or even if they just made little costumes that you could put on them, because I mean we've we've gotten some from well, that independent demon artists. hunter Pepe. I mean they'd have to have his. He's got to be purple. Yeah, he needs to be his own like with the ninja pepe those are accessories they could have technically right. sold for regular pepe yeah. but demon hunter pepe has horns and everything yeah. so i really hope that they make him as as a plushie and i would also love to see just a bigger integration of pepe into this expansion because right now he's sort of like i have a friend who started playing at the end of warlords of draenor so she never really like she always hears me talking about pepe and she's seen my plushes right. and stuff but i have to like literally go show her in her garrison somewhere that she never goes like where she can get pepe and then you know to go back and work on those achievements is all old content right. and then i also feel that like there's so many disguises that you're just like it's not like, oh, I'm going to get, there's like, you know, five or six of them. You just have to keep summoning them. And yeah. 
Yeah, you it'd really be, want one. It's hard to get the one you want. It would be really, really nice if it was something that you could choose or if you only had, like, one in your bag or something. I don't know. Yeah. But he's he's cute. I really hope that it is something that they decide to make a plushie of because I will purchase that for sure. I'll purchase that so hard. But there are, like I said, a bunch of models that we didn't show here in addition to all the models that we showed here. Um, I really, really want that Hearthstone Elemental pet. I don't know if that's going to be a crossover, like, uh, you know, play X number of games in Hearthstone, you get the pet. Or We data mine some more icons, which is you know, how we got the tip off that there was this Hearthstone pet. And there were icons for things like common card and like uncommon card. Yeah, and I saw and legendary. I, legendary. I wonder so if they're going to integrate. There's more tied to it. Yeah, I've always said that I thought it would be really cool if you could play other games while kind of in World of Warcraft because there's a lot of times when you're just yeah. sort of standing around. And I mean, not, not that that's something that you necessarily should be doing, but we're all guilty right. of hanging out in Dalaran or fishing or doing something where maybe you could be playing a mini game at the same time. And I feel like Hearthstone would not be something that would be horribly difficult to integrate into World of Warcraft. And it would yeah. be so cool if when you sat down at one of those Hearthstone boards that's in, say, like Shrine, that it it would actually prompt you to play an actual game of Hearthstone and maybe yeah. we're seeing something like that in the future it would be amazing so I'm very curious yeah. to see where that comes from another thing that is happening in 7.2 is this new option for transmog I just covered my face so you could see it <laughs> uh, there will be a tab when you go to the transmog UI that will allow you to see all of the sets that you've collected in full now we already have something like this similar in our class order halls right now where you can display right. all the Congrats. sets you've fully collected um, but this is really nice because it'll allow you to see to, to kind of quickly transmog between yeah, the sets. You can check your. You can also check your progress. It's not just for sets you've collected. It's all the sets in the game. So you can browse them and see which sets you want to collect and which you're maybe halfway through. And there are options to um, filter all the matching sets by uh, player difficulty because mm -hmm. for a lot of the older sets. When back when there was ten and twenty five, um, there would be four different colors for ten, ten heroic, twenty five yeah. normal, and then twenty five heroic. So if you haven't, you know, if you didn't play during then, it's hard to keep all those sets straight. So this lets you filter quickly. It certainly does. And there's a lot of situations too, even like Firelands is an example for me, like the shaman sets. Um, there are, some of them have pants, some of them have kilts, some of them have robes, some of right. them have just tops. So I'm definitely excited to see that because I've kind of been mixing and matching, but I, I would love to see what I've actually fully collected. Uh, thank you so much to Ice Cold Phoenix for subscribing. We really thank appreciate you. that. Uh, sorry we do not have pop-ups today. As you can probably tell, I'm not in my normal location. So I didn't get that all set up and clearly I didn't get a lot of things set up properly but we're here now aren't we um also i'm going to use this time to remind you guys that if you are subscribed to us via amazon prime twitch prime that will not auto renew so make sure that if you want to continue to be subscribed to use our emotes and to support wowhead uh make sure that you are manually redoing that at the end of every month because it will not automatically resubscribe you um what else is happening oh while we're on the topic of transmog i do feel like it is a worthwhile oh, yeah. thing to mention that um Oh god. Oh god, my train of thought is just gone. Wait, it was related to transmog and I was It's about icons. It's um I well I think this is what you were going to say. But um <laughs> we data mined a bunch of icons and Blizzard stated at BlizzCon that um tier twenty sets, so the current Oh my god, this wasn't it, but tier. this is exciting too. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so the um, upcoming rate tier, uh, tier 20, yes. uh, the uh, sets will be like high definition versions of the really famous yeah. um, tier 6 black. Yeah, they talked about this at the World of Warcraft Q&A, and I was really excited. I tweeted a yeah. link to the video of it the other day. What I was going to say is that I was super excited because they made it so that these transmog, um, what are they called? Uh, out, Not outfits. What are the ones that are called? Uh, it's like the whole transmog set, and it's in one piece. Uh, the ensembles. Ensembles will now be viewable yeah. if you right-click them. Like, if you control-click them, right. you'll be able to preview them, which is, I think, a huge, really, really good change. Thank you so much to Code Rot for subscribing to us, because that is a very obnoxious thing right now. Like, oh, here's this transmog yeah. set, and then guess what it looks like? It's Your guess is as good as ours. So I'm really yeah. excited that they're doing that, and I'm so, so excited, throwing it back to what Perk said, to see what Tier 20 is going to look like, because yeah. we know it is going to be an HD highly inspired by tier six which of course was the black temple set correct yep, the best sets yeah they're super popular still like the priest one yes. um, especially in the paladin ones yep druid as well thunderheart mm -hmm. so, so i'm so yeah. excited what they're going to be to see what they're going to be able to do with that because you know we just have like so many more pixels to work with and there's just 
Ugh, so good. Yeah, Perk's fading into the void a little bit. That's the internet. Nothing I can really do about that. She'll come back. Oh, she's back already. Look at All we had to do is complain about it a little. I might um, want, I mean, I've actually, so when I mentioned before that that game opened up onto my screen, it froze over my camera, so, like, I can't see the notes, but because I've been researching all the stuff about it, <laughs> so if the internet was bad, I could use that as an excuse yeah. to like restart stuff but you know uh, we, uh, you you did come fun. back you did come back okay. if you want to okay. take a break at any point you let me know and i'll just chit chat uh another thing okay. that was mentioned at the world of warcraft q a that we're very excited about is pet battle dungeons which are going to be in patch 7.2 tentatively at least and i'm dying I, have you tested these yet uh, the PTR was down until right when we wanted to start the show, so I have some people on it researching it, but I personally have not been able to uh, log on and test it, and then when I was trying to ninja log on in the background with the show, it decided to freeze, so that's now I can't see the notes. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> All right, well, why don't I do this? I am going to yeah. go. Yeah. I'll, I'll chit-chat for a minute by myself, and you see if you can get yourself all okay. situated. So um, all right. in other news, uh, this is just some other stuff that was in the patch notes for 7.2, is that you're going to get to see those visual updates and animations for Hunters, Death Knights, and Balanced Druids, which is something that a lot of people have been looking forward to for a long time because once Legion went live we saw a lot of casters getting new animations in 7.15 we saw uh you know some more melees getting better animation updates so it's good that they are finally updating Hunters, Death Knights, and Balance Druids. Um, also in 7.2, Crafted Gear is going to start at 8.35 as opposed to 8.15. Now it is worth noting that this will not be backdated. So if you have a piece of 8.15 gear, it's not just going to magically be 8.35, but going forward, your gear that you craft will be 8.35 once 7.2 goes live. This is something that I'm really, really excited about, and that is Paragon levels regarding uh, reputation with the Broken Isles. So essentially, once you get a exalted with a Broken Isles reputation, right now you're just kind of getting rep and it's not doing anything for you. If you're an idiot like me, you've just kind of been using it like, oh, whatever, it's just going into the void now. But I would definitely recommend hanging on to those rep tokens going forward if you're already exalted because when 7.2 goes live, you'll be able to get like paragon levels of exalted. So beyond exalted, you'll be able to use that reputation to redeem rewards later on. So if you are already exalted with Broken Isles, hang on to those, put them in the bank because you're going to want them. Uh, we we just talked a little bit about crafted gear being 835 instead of 815 on that same sort of note and i guess these should have been together in the notes but today was a weird day okay uh the obliterum forge in 7.2 will no longer have a quest line and the obliterum cap is going up to 875 so obliterum gear and crafted gear is going to be a little bit better than what you are getting from base world quest which is really nice uh world quest gear will scale from 845 up to 860 but you'll still be able to level that gear with obliterum up to 875 so it'll be a little more worthwhile to be doing that um we're also going to see an item level increase for legion dungeon loot like karazhan arcway court of stars um well all of <clears throat> I just merged two thoughts together. All Legion Dungeon gear is going to get an eye level update to keep it more relevant with what's going on right now. But then we're also going to see Karazhan, Arcway, Court of Stars all become part of the random dungeon finder. Karazhan will be broken up into upper and lower, and then Arcway and Court of Stars will actually be available on a heroic difficulty and not just mythic. Uh, Legion Invasions will also be returning in 7.2. I believe they're just called Demon Invasions this time around, and it will all take place on the Broken Isle. Now, this is something that we've kind of heard about in passing through BlizzCon and even before then, that we are going to have to, with our class order hall, with all other people in our class, we're going to have to gain a foothold on the Broken Isles in order to, you know, defend ourselves against the Legion. So I am personally very excited to see how this works because Legion invasions were something that people really enjoyed uh, participating in during, you know, the event leading up to Legion. So I'm excited to see them kind of rehash hey. that technology. Hi, Hi Perk! You hey. are! You are! And I just finished up the 7.2 patch notes so kind of moving backwards now I mean just a just a just a TLDR and recap we are going to be seeing those legion invasions in 7.2 I don't think they're going to work quite the same way that they did in the pre-legion event because it's not going to be scaling it is going to be max level content because it's leading you up to the tomb of Sargeras um, which of course is the big raid coming in 7.2 but moving back to more current things uh one of the things that we missed because we didn't have a show last week was yeah. there was a big q a so i gathered some of the highlights from it if you would like yeah. to watch i, to put that in the oh, I, I got it i put a bunch of stuff yeah. in here i was on point trust yeah. me i was yeah. on it 
today. I was trying really hard. Um, but there was a Q&A, and I kind of got some of the highlights for you. If you would like to read the transcript or watch the whole thing, you can check out wowhead.com. I think it's on about page three right now. But one Yeah, of the, there's just been so much news. So much news. <laughs> One of the most interesting questions that I thought we got an answer to was uh, the developer was asked uh, if there were any Brawlers Guild fights that were like developer favorites that didn't make it in the final cut. And the answer was super cool, right? Because they said there was a Mario and Mega Man themed fight. Yeah. So like these classic Nintendo throwbacks yeah. and that um, they ended up getting cut for whatever reason. There was another one that just got hot fixed that almost got cut, but they, they fixed it before it went out. Uh, they also mentioned that time walking gear will see eye level increases over the course of Legion yeah. to keep it more relevant. Um, also, that time walking raids are very much on the table; that they're just yeah, working, that was right? Like normally, they I like know, to we say been asking about that. I feel at like past interviews. Yes, and they always yeah. like to say things like, "I don't know, maybe someday." And like this wasn't really yeah. a maybe. They said like, "You can bet on it." Was the word that they said? That was like the phrase they used. You can bet on it. Yeah. So uh, we will see time walking raids in the future right now they're just working on the balance and the mechanics and just trying to figure out how to make it as enjoyable as an experience as possible yeah. because the feedback from when they did molten core was <laughs> subpar <laughs> it was yeah, not like, phenomenal yeah. i think it'll be like oh this would be so cool i like, can relive the memories and they're like i'm wiping on this trash for two mm -hmm, hours that's mm -hmm. not the memory i was trying to relive. yes so they just kind of want to make sure that it's going to be in a place where it is enjoyable and it's something that people are actually going to want to do and it's not just yeah. a novel idea with not a good amount of backup to it um there are some plans as well as far as professions goes to bring skinning to a place where it's more you know fair and equal with other gathering professions but they did say they don't really want to make it a world tap or something where multiple skinners can do the same uh, can skin the same corpse or anything like that, that they're still working on figuring out how exactly to make skinning better. Because right now yeah, it does kind of suck. There's two issues. I think the first issue is that um, if, like, people are helping you kill a mob and, and you're not in that person's party um, and they have the tap on the mob, you, uh, outside the party, can't skin the mob. Yeah. Um, but then people are like, you know, skinning is a bit different from herbalism and mining because... If some person's not a skinner and they're just, you know, out in the world killing things, you have all these, you know, free nodes out there. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's, they don't have multi-tap, but they yeah. have this unique system of, like, generating their own nodes by having other people kill things. Yeah, it's, it's weird right now, and I, and I can definitely see how that would be crappy. I mean, for other people, you can kind of avoid things and you can farm without really doing as much combat type stuff you can get in a group with six herbalists and you can all just go around and herb. Right, i guess the fantasy of skinning is like you know you're like getting bloody and like actually yeah the skin off of something oh. but from a practical sense it's like the other gathering professions can do this easily and i cannot can yes i totally agree i totally agree that there is some sort of change that needs to be made. Thank you so much yeah. to Gadzoon for subscribing to us with Thank Twitch you. Prime. We really appreciate it. Um, another interesting highlight from the Q&A is that somebody had asked if there was ever going to be any updates to holidays or anything like that, and they brought up that, you know, we've got all these new mini holidays coming up. Of course, the uh, Call to the Scarab event is very, very soon. And they It's had actually said, live on EU, EU realms, but live in U.S. and, like, Eight hours, yeah, yeah, it's super soon. But one of the things yeah. they said is that they're already considering new mini holidays because they have so much freedom being that they're all Azeroth-based as opposed to real-world-based. Right. And one of the ideas that they had come up with was a Murloc New Year event, which yeah. I thought was really adorable, and I wonder how that would work or if it's something that they're still considering and maybe that got turned into, you know, the Murloc, uh, the running of the Murlocs, or the march of the Murlocs. So I'm interested to see what they're ending up you know, settling on for these new events because it's exciting to hear that, you know, what has been announced is not all that will ever be. And it's also exciting that some of the things, like, I think New Year's is one that, you know, there are fireworks, but it's not something that there's some yeah. grand Blizzard, celebration. They, 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 people were like, you know, but can you make actual New Year's better because yeah. it's kind of outdated Subpar, compared yeah. to Wintervale being really big. And they're like, yeah, in addition to developing micro holidays, you know, upgrading New Year's would make sense as a regular holiday as its own right as well. Absolutely. So. Um, and as you know, as we have seen in the 715 PTR, they are doing updates to the regular holidays as well. Like, um, you don't need to be a level 110 to do Love is yeah. in the Air, the Daily Hub. There's a few new items here and there, like yes. the Love Boat. 
Um, so it's not like, oh, there's micro holidays. That means the other holidays will, you know. Yeah, forward. and I don't know if this was new information or not, but they did mention that something like Call of the Scarab only requires like level 51. So I think other of the micro holidays will also be in a place where lower level characters can do yeah. them. Yeah, uh, that, that was a good point. So people, um, Call of the Scarab got brought up at the Q&A because people were asking what Blizzard thought about um, like a leveling or experience holiday. I think also because, you know, games like Diablo or Heroes are like, oh, you know, experience weekend, or yeah. you know, legendaries drop more weekend. Yeah. And Blizzard was saying that it seemed interesting, and it's kind of like a halfway uh, gap. Things like Call of the Scarab were accessible to lower level players, and they do have things like, you know, World Quest, um, which give a hefty chunk of experience. Yeah. So, um, We'll actually see how that goes. I'm curious uh, if there are lots of people in that level range, because to me, I, I always figured people just, you know, would boost, and Silicus didn't really seem like a super popular area, but it'll be interesting to see if there's low-level characters, well, you know, questing in Silithus now this it, weekend. You bring up a really interesting point, too, that we haven't really seen anything that's like a double XP weekend or a double artifact power weekend. I mean, we do have these weekend events. I know there's never going to be, like, a legendary, but, but yeah, I mean, like, Diablo, to get people really back into, you know, Reaper of Souls was like, oh, you know, one month celebration, we'll have more experience, and it's yeah. like, oh, you know, like, it's the 4th of July, we'll have another holiday, or like, oh, it's the anniversary, there's always something. Yeah, it would to be really nice people back in oh no you make a great point it would be really cool to see things like double xp weekend or you know if you're max art if you're max level maybe you could get double artifact power for that period of time or i, I feel like that, that that sounds really cool but i feel like people be like oh like now i must like cancel my you know weekend plans to live in more of souls well, correct me if i'm wrong didn't <laughs> yeah. they used to have like double uh battleground like double honor weekends and stuff like a long time ago yeah they used the call to arms like every few days um you would get some bonus by doing a battleground yeah so, so i mean even if they were just add little things in like that i feel like right now with the way that the weekly events work they really require you to do a lot more to get things like Time walking, for instance, this weekend. Maybe I'm just salty because I got bad rewards, but you know, right. they added. Yeah, <laughs> they added, uh, you know, with the time, which all also, by the way, I feel like it's very bizarre that they had a time walking so close to the launch of 7.15, and that wasn't Miss of Pandaria time walking. I know. I agree. Very um, weird to me. Very strange choice. But um, you know, you have to do all this, and then you're getting like, yes, you're getting a big chunk of artifact power right off. That I think you get like 150 thousand or something like that. But you you know, you can also get a piece of gear, and uh, right now it can feel like you're doing a lot of work, and then you actually end up getting no real reward. Right. Well, they did upgrade the piece of gear to Nighthold level loot, up from Emerald Nightmare, yes. so if you're not really a raider, that is pretty good at the start, yes. and also the bonus roll seal if, you know, you're chewing through them with everything. Yes. But, so, um, yeah. Valid point. Also, uh, yeah. No, go just, ahead. I just, I just... Nah, I was just looking at the notes and just being like, oh, you know, we're sort of officially into the 715. Yeah, the we're there. Before we move the, on from the Q&A, uh, though, they did stuff. say yeah. that the next Q&A would likely be in February because they're aiming to do one a month. So we'll likely see one mid to end of February. Moving on to 7.15. Ah! <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so 715. Uh, Nighthold came out uh, on Tuesday, and then the week before, 715 came out. Um... It featured many class changes, new legendaries for all specs, um, artifact knowledge catch-up, secondary stat changes, Brawler's Guild fights, micro holidays, uh, Miss of Pandaria time walking soon, TM, <laughs> um, profession updates like these cool blacksmithing weapons, yep. and also the Blades Edge Arena revamp. And yep. I feel like on the last show, we spent a lot of time pre yes. pre previewing 715. Yes, we did. But, um, yeah, I mean, so far what I what I'm seeing, just you know, looking at what people are, you know, looking at, you know, this far into the patch, is that people are, you know, mainly looking up their class changes, how to adjust to, you know, Nighthold, um, you know, with the rotation changes, or you know, with Poor the hunters. legendary how to fix thing, um, and also a lot of people are looking up Brawler's Guild fights because you know we kept finding all these details how it's like, oh, actually Hexos is back and he is a shirt, or um, you know. There's a rumble fight, and all of us are in the queue. We're going yeah. to join and fight and getting the new mount. So those are the two things that 
um, I've seen people, you know, going to Wildhead for for the, uh, you know, most information. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. I've seen a lot of people doing Brawler Skilled since it came back. And those, um, if you are looking to get one of those invitations, they are obtainable from Emissary Quests, from the Black Market Auction House, and also from the uh, Elite Vrykul that you can find in Stormheim. In Kiosk, yeah. Yep. So yeah. if you, if you have not gotten one yet and you want to get it, that is something that you can farm out. Speaking of things that if you haven't gotten yet and you want to get, this if you really are a yeah. Beast Mastery Hunter, this was something that was sort of ninja added and nobody really expected. This is a new spirit beast that can be found in Duskwood. His name is Lightning Paw, and he is in the Raven Hill Cemetery. Uh, he is a fox, and he's got this kind of lightning ripple effect, and he's see-through-ish. And um, you can obtain him by looking for these bushes that have eyeballs in them and... There's a cute story about how Lightning Fox came to be, uh, Lightning Paw. Um, one of the uh, developers on Twitter, um, Morgard, uh, said that his daughter really likes playing a hunter, and this was her idea, and yeah. It's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, I think it's great that they add just new little fun things like that because I feel like yeah. every time that people discover something, the community has this moment where everybody's like coming together and like, oh, it's yeah, so each cool other out. and I got a new thing. So I really love it when they do stuff like that, even though it's not like this big impactful thing to the game or anything. People are so excited when little stuff like that happens. So yeah, good on you, Blizz. Plus, everybody loves foxes. Um, also, of course, this last week, Nighthold opened in normal and heroic mode. Uh, Mythic and LFR are going to be opening this coming week. Uh, there's 10 bosses in Nighthold, and it is a super pretty raid. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I know, it's so, it's so pretty. It's so purple and elegant, and Blizzard actually kind of touched on this in their preview. They were talking about how it's a departure. A lot of the times the raid has to be like super serious and show that it's demonic and it's evil but because Nighthold was taken over by the demons you do have that demonic presence but it's also meant to convey this very grand and elegant oh, and yeah. you know advanced civilization oh yeah I mean my whole guild is like going through it right now and uh, my raid group we've killed I want to say seven eight I don't know seven seven bosses I think Maybe six? I don't know. Yeah. We've killed some bosses. And um, we have been going through, and it's like every two seconds, it's like, wait, I gotta stop and take a screenshot. I gotta stop and take a screenshot, because there's just so many areas that are yeah. gorgeous. I mean, I think I think most people who have raided for a long time would agree that this has yeah. got to be one of the prettiest raids they've ever made. It is just yeah. so detailed and so pretty, and uh, a lot of the bosses have mechanics that are just way out there, man. <laughs> like, they're so different than things that we've done in the past. So, um, I, I've been really, really enjoying it. Um, there are, there is also a mini, like, world boss inside of Nighthold. Yeah, really this was strange. kind of a surprise. Like, yeah. it showed up in the data earlier, but, um, yeah, there's this, uh, his guy, T Torm the Brute, and, um, he shows up after the first boss, and, um, the UI makes it seem like, um, wait, sorry, just the note just says, the, uh, the actual UI, the, the UI makes it seem like he's a world boss and like, oh, he'll drop loot, but he actually does not. Yeah, drop. he doesn't. It's all very He just gives you the order resources and, yeah, um, and is in the way. <laughs> we did a mine during the PTR, we did a mine, like, I don't know, something like eight of, uh, eight similar quests, so every week there'll probably be another you know, raid boss yeah. after, um, one of, you know, after a different place in Nighthold. And, um, yeah, I just hope they change the UI because a lot of people were confused on Blowhead. They're like, oh, I'll get new loot. And it's like, no, you no, won't. you won't. No, you won't. Uh, as far as loot does go, though, in Nighthold, that's, I just moved that section down because this yeah, seemed like a better sense. transition. Yeah. Um, I think I did that earlier, my bad. Uh, as far as the loot does go that is in Nighthold, of course, this is our first introduction in Legion to loot uh, that is tier loot. It is tier 19. Yep. You can get the helmet from Alessande. You can get the chest from Croesus, Tychondrius drops shoulders, Star Augur Atreus drops gloves, <laughs> Gul'dan drops legs, and Trillax drops a cloak. Uh, this is an eight piece tier set. So it's six. Six piece tier set. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, there is eight pieces for the full appearance of gear, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, people that are really into Transmog are into it because even though the loot looks like the same stuff you get in Emerald Nightmare, Emerald Nightmare didn't have a ton of bosses and the loot tables were small. So, with, with Nighthold, if you really want to get that eight peach matching set, now you can um, do so. Yeah. So like, 
I think, you know, like, I want to say, like, Druids, for example, only four pieces of their look were in Emerald Nightmare. And, oh, that actually reminds me of a PTR thing I didn't mention. <laughs> but apparently, um, when there are new PTR achievements, um, one, there are, there's a round of achievements to... Do, do, do one second. Oh, yeah. So there's, a, there's this whole, like, Dressed For series, and... Um, yeah, it's like, collect a tier 19 armor set from the Nighthold. Collect a tier 18 armor set from Hellfire Citadel. You know, collect a gladiator set. So there are achievements now for you to collect a matching set. Um, oh, that makes sense with the whole thing that. in the transmog tab. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Um, the loot, as far as eye level goes, I think on normal it's 870, and then heroic would be 870. 85 then mythic is 900 uh the next six are going to go up by five eye levels and then yeah. Gul Dan will also go up by another five eye levels so 10 eye levels higher than the yep. uh, original first boss and those can be titan forged up to 925 oh my god that's such a ridiculous level for gear to yeah. be um now on top of loot obviously they drop more than just tier loot there's a lot of awesome trinkets that drop in there yeah. uh relics stuff like that but there's a lot of fun loot too so if you are doing the Falcosaur pet quests to try to turn them into mounts, you'll need to kill Scorpiron as well as Croesus as part of the Falcosaur quests. There's also a memory cube which There's drops. Yeah, I got it. Uh, there's the memory cube that drops off of the Chronomatic Anomaly, which is a toy that allows you to watch all of the Legion cinematics, which is very cool. There's also an illusion, Chronos, from the Chronomatic Anomaly. I assume that's maybe a weapon in, like a weapon? Yeah, it's sort of like a purpley uh, weapon enchant, and remember, Legion um, illusions are part of the appearance, yeah. so, um, you know, it's they're, they're safe as part of your appearance now. Yeah. Uh, there's also um, the glyph of Twilight it's so Bloom. Pretty. Oh, it's so my sister was so excited. This dropped yeah. for me. I'm a scribe, uh, and it drops off of High Botanist Talarn. It's sort of like a path of leaves when druids walk. It's really pretty. Yeah, it makes. I think it makes your life bloom be like a purple or a blue flower. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes sense because he's like the evil botanist. Yes. Um, this next one's really cool. So it's um they're trying to give like every well, not every profession but most professions something and the recipe for the steel bound harness which is a fell version of the very popular corehound mount um, is from Tychondrius. Mm -hmm. So um, you need to be eight hundred to learn the um, recipe and then you can sell the mount and you know it takes a lot of materials but um it looks really cool and there's a Hunters can also tame a little fell core hound, so it looks Aww, really cute. That's adorable. That's adorable. Of course, if you've been doing your insurrection quest through Suramar, you can finally finish it and get your Arcanist Mana Saber, which um, is for doing the very last quest, which requires you to kill Gul'dan. And that is sort of a recolor, a retint of the uh, Mystic Rune Saber, and it's got some different doodads on it as well. It's not yeah, it's like high quite identical. Yeah, it's like high-definition Saber. Um, there's also yeah. the Skull of Corruption, which is a bind on equipped toy that can only be looted by demon hunters. Uh, and then the gold, this is what we were talking about earlier, right? Or is this different? It's different. Okay, yeah. talk about it. I don't understand it. Okay, so um, we mentioned earlier that there's this little Hearthstone pet and that we data mined some Hearthstone, icon, Hearthstone icons in 7.2, implying that more fun Hearthstone things are showing up in WoW. Um, but what we did, uh, find is that, um, Gul'dan drops this golden, um, Hearthstone card, and it's, uh, it's funny, it's called Golden Hearthstone Card Lord Jaraxxus. Oh. And, um, it's a toy which turns you into him, and you can do your signature emotes for a little period of time. And, um, the really funny thing is that, um... The uh, in the data, the um, the pay like the entry originally for this was a totally different toy during the Warlords of Draenor beta. It was um, like a Hearthstone car pile of decks when yeah. you would um, and you would like you would just like click on it and it would give you a chat message on what card you won. So someone left a Wowhead comment a few years ago, being like, "I hope I get a Golden Jaraxxus." Oh my god! And gosh. then Blizzard changed the name, so of course, like it's the top comment on Wowhead, and people are like, "Hey, you got your wish! It turned into it." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing! So, I would go on there and I'd be like, "Can you ask Blizzard to also do this?" Which, by the way, Blizzard, if yeah. you're listening, my current request is that crafting work the way it does in Diablo, just. When you craft something, why does it have to take five minutes if you do 200 of something? I've been making tomes for my guild because apparently I'm the only scribe in my guild. 
And, like, somebody was like, can you make me, like, 500 tomes? That actually takes, like, 17 minutes to craft. And you just have to stand there for 17 minutes. It's so annoying. Blizzard, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, so, also yeah, moving this, on. <laughs> this is like the quest series, which never, ever, ever ends. Um, <laughs> She's balance, not wrong. Yeah, so Balance of Power has continued with a series of even more quests. Um, there is a quest to kill a few bosses and get their, you know, related items in the Nighthold uh, um, Delusions of yep. Grandeur. And then collecting 20 night shards from the night hold on normal difficulty or higher. And then you have to kill Gul'dan, but according to the Wowhead comments, it is bugged, so you um, can't loot the eye from the Perfect. Gul'dan chest. 10 out of 10. But I would assume after this quest that you could then unlock your new Valorous appearance, which means that if Maybe. you've already completed achievements like Unleash Monstrosities, you can you can then use those tints. I know yes. a lot of people were confused because they're like, hey, I already had these achievements done and it says I've unlocked a tint, why can't I use it? And it's like, well, you didn't unlock the base new model for your artifact yet. Silly. Silly. Um, also, now that Night Hill is out, uh, Glory of the Re Legion Raider can now be complete. Complete. Yeah. Glory of the Legion Raider can now be completed, and you'll be rewarded with the Defiled Reigns, which I believe is a moose, right? It's like yeah, a it's angry, an angry moose. Evil, evil moose, because yeah, that it's makes like the sense. Citadel moose got really angry. Yeah, I don't know. That's so silly. Um, of course, the Ghoul Dance cinematic is available now to watch on YouTube. We're not going to show it here because even without audio, there would be spoilers. But if you do want to see it, it's on Wowhead's YouTube channel, and it is in multiple languages. So if you'd prefer to watch it in another language, maybe English isn't your first language, I believe it's available in like French. Polish, German. Yeah, it's um French. Yeah, just French, German, Russian for now. Russian, um, yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of EU found sites yep. asked us if we could do a localized version, so we did sure. that. I also want to clarify something really quick about the cinematic. Um, we originally posted it back when Seven One came out. Normally, whenever there's a new patch, like all the cinematics um can be data mined. Yeah, and Blizzard didn't realize that this one was included in the data so early, so after they spoke to us about it, we agreed to, you know, take it down until a more appropriate time. Yeah. And we know that it's been floating around, but, you know, it's sort of out of our control, you know, we decided to, you know, just comply with Blizzard. So I know some people were like, oh, why are you posting this again? Like, you guys already found it. And it's like, well, you know, now more people can yeah. appreciate the story, and it probably has more emotional impact after you've killed all the bosses in the night hold and yes. get a sense of the story and insurrection and the emotional build up yes. and all that. If you are going to go watch it on YouTube, I would highly 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 recommend watching the Broken Shore cinematic first. Yeah. Uh because there's sort of this parallel thing that happens and a lot of people really appreciated that. So yeah. it doesn't really matter if you watch it from Horde Alliance. I would probably watch yeah. it from Alliance, but it doesn't really matter which one you yeah. watch, but I would watch it first. Yeah. Um, in other news regarding loot and legendaries, uh, as you guys probably know, legendaries are now eye level 940, but then that does not backdate. So if you have a 910 right. legendary, you can complete the quest Touch of the Titan, which will upgrade your legendary from 910 to 940. It'll require you to collect 50 essences of a Manthul, which are sources, which can be found in mythic caches from RBGs and also from normal and heroic raid bosses. Yes, there are a few other places, but those seem to be really solid ways to get them. Yes. So, uh, and it's pretty quick because I haven't really been doing anything out of my way to try and I think I'm about halfway to upgrading my first of two legendaries. So I'm really hoping that I get a better legendary before I start the second one because ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, all yeah. of the legendaries dropping as of right now uh, when Nighthold release are 940 by default. And this was also something that was really random. It was confirmed this week that Blingtron 6000 yeah. does have a chance to drop legendaries. And I just felt yeah. like that was worth putting out there because I don't think many people yeah. know that. So, I mean, if you happen to see a Blingtron 6000, definitely pick it up because you might get something phenomenal yeah. out of there. Uh, moving on from like 7.15 and Nighthold stuff in in other news, uh, world boss Anna Moose spawn. She is in Suramar, correct? Yeah, I think I think she's either uh, despawning very soon or will. Um, oh no, she's still up for a little bit on um, on US realms. Mm -hmm. So um, she uh, she's available for one day and six hours, one day and fourteen hours at the time yep. of uh, filming this, and. Uh, she, along with one of the other um, world bosses, uh, has like a very small chance to spawn 
after you know a patch comes out. She's not on the regular Tuesday rotation. Yep. So she's only up for three days instead of six. She is in Suramar, and um, she uh, does count for Unleashed Monstrosities, and she you know does have the usual World Boss loot. I believe her special item is that she drops chests. And um, yeah, if you want to work towards Unleashed Monstrosities, you can go kill her. And the other World Boss, Humongous, is also up for the full week. Yep. Um, also, as of Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday coming up, Mythic Keystones yep. are going to now have rewards which scale up to level 15. So I believe that's 900. Is that right? Uh, yeah, they didn't give us numbers, but we looked at our current Mythic Plus guide chart, and based on the values for uh, what's currently at 12, you know, we did the math, and we think it's going to be 900 for them from the weekly chest, which, as we mentioned, um, 900 is the item level of Mythic loot from the first three um, Nighthold bosses. Yep. Um, also, Curious Coin drop rate has been confirmed to be increased in 7.15, so if you've been collecting those and you notice you're getting more than usual, that is working as intended. And uh, a lot of things with Inscription with 7.15 had their costs reduced, like Vantis runes and stuff like that, but also Codexes of the Tranquil Mind as well as Tomes of the Tranquil yeah, Mind have been super way reduced. cheaper. Uh, it's not like, oh, we remove one, it's like, wow, well, this is like... Yeah, it went from costing, I believe it cost like two sallow and 10 rosate before and now it only costs one sallow to make a tome so they're significantly cheaper um and i think this was in response to players being like i have to respect every fight and people yeah. are price gouging these which i didn't i did not even get on the like yeah. i've been saying all expansion like it kind of sucks to be a scribe there's it's really hard to sell glyphs people aren't as interested in them because they're all vanity and i did not realize that people were like price gouging tomes and i wasn't even getting on that like darn it and now i'm too late yeah. um <laughs> So I've been making them for my guild, though. Um, anyways, in other news, there's a bunch of events going on right now, which we talked about earlier. Of course, the Lunar Fest is going to be starting yeah. on the 21st on U.S. Realms, just in about eight hours now. There are new dragon costume toys, as well as a couple other updated things. And there's also... The we, dragon costume toys, before we move on... They're ridiculous. They're really funny because they're amazing. there's a toy that's a dragon head, a dragon body, and a dragon tail. Yep. So you can line up and have a little conga line of, you know, infinite... Oh yeah, middle, middle pieces. So I, guess, I guess you could even just have a circle of like so oh god just, yeah so good yeah. um so those are yeah. the most ridiculous toys ever i i can't wait to see people just being stupid with them because you know they will be they'll be like all around dalaran and just yeah. being amazingly trolly so For that is reason, like a giant growth potion like giant dragon oh no you're right it's gonna be yeah. a plague it's gonna be a plague upon our households um i also wanted to mention even though this isn't wow related overwatch is also celebrating the chinese new year event uh which is going to begin on january 24th i think there's skins for may and i saw one i think for uh Diva, a bunch yeah, of the... Yeah, there's been a few leaked ones. I yeah. don't think there's anything official. Yet. No, nothing there's official. There's also an event coming um, for Heroes of the Storm, yep. which has a special rooster mount yeah, and different skins uh, bundles and available. All sorts of yeah. stuff. And I'm sure there'll be something in Hearthstone as well, because there usually is. Uh, the Call to Scarab event, which is our very first micro-holiday, weekends on the 21st. That is all themed to Encourage, and Wowhead has a really cool overview and guide of stuff that you can do in Encourage. Regard, like while the event is going on as well because there's going to be world quests and uh, whoever, I guess, wins, air quotes, at the end is going to get to display their faction's banner for the yeah. entire year. So there are all these world quests you can do in the zone and they all reward these different Karaji commendations and the idea is that the Alliance and the Horde have this rivalry and whoever gets the most commendations wins and the world quests are all related to things you had to do for the opening of the AQ gates, you know, over a decade ago, so yeah. you have to kill Twilight Cultist, you can turn in super low level meat like, you know, sandworm meat. Yeah. Um, you can um, summon bosses of different tiers, including ones that, you know, sound like the Silithus world bosses, like, you know, Barum Kazoom. These guys used to drop epics back in the day. Um, you can even kill, um, you can even clear Encourage, and that's why we made a separate loot guide because oh. there's actually, there's a ton of loot from Encourage that. A lot of people don't know about and like you know there's pets there's all these very evil bug looking weapons there are mm -hmm, amounts mm -hmm. you can collect mm -hmm. um you know there are these transmog sets that look pretty different than what you think of as you know the classic uh you know wow look yeah and there's even these really interesting ways to get the tier it's not just like oh i looted this from a boss it's like oh you have to get the rep and then collect the scarabs and there's this there's just a lot of fun content so i was like you know if you're in the area 
don't just do the world quest objective, you know, go try to farm up some of the fun things. So yeah, we absolutely. Have a loot guide on the site to that, and I hope people like that. And I, you know, I want to do more stuff with that as opposed to just having, you know, like repost the Blizzard stuff. For yeah, no, I think I think it's great. And that was one of the events that you had said when you guys were testing them that you were surprised that that was only a micro holiday because there was so much content for it to be, you know, compared to something like the hatching of the hippogriffs. Uh, I know. Which is a I much... like birds, but yeah. I, think I like so. birds. <laughs> um, right. Also, we talked about this briefly earlier, but Northern Time Walking is going on right now, and the quest does reward a Nighthold cache with normal quality gear. And it is my understanding that there is a chance to get tier in that, even though there wasn't a chance to get tier in the Warlords of Draenor one. Um, yeah, apparently um, yeah. several uh, writers for WoW did confirm they got, yeah. I think they got tier in it. Tier in it, yeah. So if you, whether you're a raider or not, uh, it is worth doing, even if you're somebody who's raiding on a much higher difficulty than normal, because completing your tier set is uber important, and you never know, you could get something off of, like, one of the end bosses, which is going to be higher level, you could get right. time, or, uh, Titan Forge, stuff like that, so, um, and then we also did briefly mention this, but the Strangled Thorn Fishing Tournament came back in 7.15! Yeah, ah, it was mentioned at the Q&A that yeah. they wanted it to come back, but they weren't sure, Yeah, and it did. It just sort of returned unannounced. It is still at 2 p.m. server time. Um, there, what You still have to catch your 40 tasty fish to be the winner, mm -hmm. and it, winning it does work towards your salty title. Yep. But what is different is that um, instead of being uh, realm-wide, it's now um, region-wide, yeah. at least according to the... Um, like flavor text and the idea is that it says oh 50 winners per realm get the first place prize but after doing it it felt like way more than 50 yeah um and all winners now have a choice of the five items and this is different than in the past because normally the first place winner had a choice of five items and second and third place didn't have access to as many items yeah but at least the first 50 people um, you know, can I get, wonder... like, the Arcanite fishing rod and all, or, like, the fish trinket and that stuff. Yeah, I wonder if it feels like that because they're giving, like, for instance, my I'm on Rune Totem and we're connected with Uther, and maybe they're giving each individual realm their 50 as opposed to connected realms. So on yeah. a realm where maybe three servers or two servers are connected, you're really, it's more like 100 or 150. Plus then you have, like, sharding and stuff, which is bringing in even more, you know, realms yeah. and stuff so what you're really I found really funny is that the goblin was doing a yell whenever someone won oh my <laughs> so god so, ow, ow. Oh, they're yeah. ridiculous wait on the t on the topic of fishing so i got my artifact fishing pole i saw grants i'm Yay. so excited and i uh i saved a bunch of the lures that i didn't need while i you know after i'd gotten the rare fish i saved the lure and then i went back and i used all the lures and i'm already up to like level eight and i didn't even really have to do nice. anything extra so that was very exciting for me i know i i've gotten so many bobbers and not the pepe i've gotten the can of worms the mm. cat the tugboat <laughs> i'm working on my rep with margos but that's slow even if you're in a group I man know. that takes hours that's yeah. got to take probably eight hours total because i've i've sank four or five hours into it already and i think yeah. i'm only on the second ring of rep it's a lot and then you still have to fish yeah. up more mana just to get the you know trashy and the other bobbers and stuff but yeah i'm so excited that i finally got it um also, I don't have images for these. I'm sorry, but do we have do we have stuff for the two things on the bottom of the notes, or are we yeah. skipping that? So, um, if you um, if you go to Wildhead's front page, um, you know there's the Today in Broken Isle section, and then there's a Blizzard Gear discount code. Mm -hmm. um, we got a little late start because people were on vacation, yeah. but we do have the discount code has returned. Wait, it I is feel like this is a good time to say uh, Happy Marriage, Happy Wedding. Our one, our big oh, yeah. yeah. The reason we didn't have yeah. a code for a couple weeks is because our primary. Uh, contact for stuff like this that Blizzard got married. So congratulations, Chris. I hope that yep, you have a wonderful marriage. Go on. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Wowhead 15 is 15% 15 off all Warcraft products. Uh, so apparel, um, Pepe, other plushies. Oh yeah, there's um, a lot of Warcraft art stuff. Books, mouse pads, uh, Murloc slippers. Anything under that backpack. Warcraft category. There's a lot. Yep. There's a lot. And 15% is a good discount. So if you were looking at anything, and those codes will work on sale items. So if there's any Warcraft sale yep. items, you will be able to use that code. Uh, how about Jinx? Do we have a code for Jinx active yeah. right now? Yeah, we do. It is 20% off all Blizzard products in January with code Nighthold Opens. Ooh, 20%. So those codes are viewable right yeah. on the front page of Wowhead if you need a reminder for later on. And then I'm going to flip it over to you, Perk, to talk a little bit about Wowhead. 
and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, we have two uh, two kind of big things going on Wowhead. So um, just to mention briefly with, you know, 7.5 and Nighthold going on, you know, a big part is making sure not only that the data is, you know, in good shape and, you know, helping people understand things, but that our network of guide writers has provided explanations on all the tricky topics to help you out, you know, the day of the patch. So our class writers have been doing a great job um, updating all their posts, you know, for like rotations and talents and new gear options and hot fixes and all that good stuff. And then on our raid side, um, Heliocentric um, has put up most of our Nighthold guides. Um, she is now working at Blizzard, so she cannot maintain them, but Fat Boss TV um, is updating them moving forward, and they have also um, written the Gul'dan guide for Wowhead from scratch. So, you know, definitely check all those guides out, and if you like them, you know, thank the writers or share them with your guild. Um, we really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, the second thing is that um, Wowhead is hiring. Um, once again, we are looking for both a senior PHP developer who can work remotely from home and that person would be doing day-to-day -day, you know um, feature development on wildhead so things like the flying tool or the profiler or today in broken isles and we're also looking for um a lead engineer position which is someone who would be based in our um, los angeles office and that person you know would be um you know, a developer, but also be interested in more of a management role because um, there's like a ton of stuff going on between improvements we need to make for the site for, you know, live information and then always having constant PTRs without any downtime. We decided that we wanted to, you know, restructure the site so um, it would just be, you know, more efficient for everyone to have someone like overseeing all these different things that are constantly going on. Oh, absolutely. So, if you're interested in either position, um, you can email jobs at zam.com. Uh, please indicate which position you are applying for in the subject line. And you can also find more information if you go to wowhood.com slash jobs. Yep. And yeah, uh, that's basically it. Um, you can always ask me or any other, you know, people who work on Wowhood questions, if you're curious, um, you're like, yes, you can actually work from home. I've worked from home for five years. Um, you know, if you're a type of person that, um, you know, likes building websites for fun, like maybe you've submitted a WoW site to Reddit, or you've, like, submitted feedback to WoWhead asking if we could, you know, improve a feature in a certain way and wish that you could have, you know, done that yourself, you know, you are the perfect candidate. We want people Absolutely. that are really into playing WoW that also are always thinking of, you know, ways to analyze oh, and yeah. improve the quality of the site. Or, you know, if you do something in-game, we want you to be like, oh, I know how to help other people yeah. understand creating something on Wowhead. So yeah. We Basically, be an innovative coding fanboy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, and now we are going to... Uh, did Sass send you questions from our live Twitch yeah. audience? Yep. Uh, we have a decent number of questions. Um, also, um, I, as I went to check the questions, apparently there was a blue post made right now. Of course that, there um, was. Um, convergence of... Course. of Blizzard has been following the discussion on the changes to converge on the fate for retribution paladins, and um, they, that was recently hotfixed, wouldn't proc as much, and um, it needed to be hotfixed because convergence for ret was wildly out of lines because of an, you know, they didn't realize it had a certain interaction with the uh, ability crusade, but after investigation, the hotfix was too severe, so there'll be some additional adjustments made um, to the trinket, and they're also investigating the value for other classes, um, like Dark Arbiter for Unholy um, Death Knights. And also planning to improve a Nighthold Trinkets, which have effects that aren't a stat buff, such as the Slam on Might of Croesus. So yeah, that came out like two minutes ago. Two minutes um, ago. Just throwing it out there, because it is the news. And now I'm looking at questions that Sass has. Perfect. Um, yeah. So just some of these uh, discussions, some of these are uh, faster. Um, Burning Crusade's 10th anniversary was on the 15th. I didn't see any mention of it. Were either of you disappointed? Um, it was a really... I did, I did see um, Warcraft and Blizzard tweet about it, and they were showing the cinematic. Um, we didn't personally cover it on Wowhead just because that was right before Nighthold, and we were, like, you know, really yeah, pushing it's a timing our, our main guys at the time. Like, you know, it's we like highlighting cool things like that, but we just we had to, like, 
tell people like, look, like this is the score prior on God. Like everyone, look at this guide. I also um, think that a lot of times when you bring up like, oh, Wrath of the Lich King or oh, Burning Crusade, I it's like really odd how it kind of brings up this sort of air of negativity where people will yeah, immediately be like, oh, this is so like sometimes it's like even though things like that are really really exciting as a fan, you have to step back and realize that you don't want to foster an air of grumpiness. Yeah. Um, it doesn't <laughs> appear the changes to the WoW token came in 715. No. Do we have any idea when those changes are coming? No. Um, we don't know. They were also left out of the patch notes, so mm -hmm. like, Blizzard hasn't acknowledged that they've coded up this feature. Yeah, but, something's broken. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> something's broken uh, in the background, if I had to guess, because they had talked about it at, at BlizzCon as being something that was coming very soon. So I think they had anticipated that being in 7.15, yeah. but if, if it... I would I would guess 7.2, but that's a little ways off, so it's not super close don't don't be don't hold your breath yeah You'll um, die. do they know if the non-tier set items like the non-class restricted sets from places like uldor will show up in the new um no. transmunk item set system no. i don't believe that's the case um just looking at um it's just it not the point of that collection yeah. Yeah, like, looking at the example I have, the, the PTR has been down, so thank you to um, Unlimited Black for sending me the screenshot I've included in the Wowhead post. But um, basically, you know, on the Priest, like, you'll only have, um, you know, like, your Tier 8 listed, your Tier 9, Tier 10. There's no, like, oh, well, here's the Mage lookalike set that you could technically um, collect. Yeah, no, um, they're definitely looking say, for the yeah. ones that are token pieces. That's just kind of the point yeah. of that set. That's I not to say, say you can't transmog yeah. it manually. I'm sorry, right. Kirk. But I will say that for... But because um, for something like the Crimson Acolyte Regalia, which is only a five-piece set, um, like the Tier 10, um, you know, a lot of sets are not actually eight items. Uh, for things like boots or belts or waists, um, they will pick one item that, you know, is not a tier set bonus and include that in the, like, collection um, UI to give people pointers. But yeah, there's no, like, oh, this is the alternate recolor from the Burning Crusade dungeon of Druid Tier 1. It's yeah. just, like... Tier one, tier two. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I heard something of tier four, five, and six tokens from old content were being updated to current expansion technology. Where yes. you right click on them, as it turns into an item. Yes. Is this true? Um, yes. Um, you can read about this. Uh, so Blizzard did not post the seven point two PTR patch notes on their site, but they had it in the launcher, and we can data mine it from the launcher. So we also have the post on Wowhead. And the actual um, uh, description is, Set tokens for all raids from Serpent Shrine to Siege of Orgrimmar have been updated to provide loot for your spec on right-click in the same manner as newer raid set tokens. Ugh, the so nice. vendor functionality of these items have not been changed. So wait, do we know if that's going to be backdated? Um, because I let me tell know. you about the eight tokens I have sitting in my bank because I'm too lazy to go track down all the vendors. <laughs> yeah, I am not sure. That's okay. <laughs> Let's see. Do you think that capital cities will ever be updated to Surmar city type size? No. I don't think, I mean, I think they've said before that updating a capital city is a ton of work. Oh, like, yeah. it, it's a huge amount of work compared to, um, you know, choosing to develop that over, like, a new questing zone yeah. or, you know, a new art for a new raid. So I don't think they would be updated, but I think that moving forward, um, they'll learn from the lessons of Siramore that having a city that feels lived in it isn't just like, oh, the bank is here. Um, you know, sort of like Warspear and Stormshield were not very good cities that felt alive. Yeah. So I think that they want to, you know, keep having little details like Suramar and Dalaran and moving forward. And I think I think it would be nice if there were kind of, you know, residential sections where you could just walk around and that aren't really related to anything important that are just kind of there if you you know, no, I totally to agree. Ambiance. I would really love it if once this expansion is over and you've com and you've completed Nighthold, that's that there would be a point where Suramar would not be a hostile yeah. environment. I've also tweeted that it would be cool if um, there was like a Legion-based holiday that was about Suramar's culture. <gasps> yes. Like, oh, you know, we've like set Suramar. Right, and it'd be like just... the summer wine festival or something. Like it'd yeah, be... because there's no holidays in August, so something like a summer wine festival would be really good. Oh my god, and we can drink wine in real life too. This is the best yes. idea. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, do you think Blizzard uh, 
Oh, wait. Blah, blah, blah. Why should I or anyone participate in micro holidays? What is there to gain? So this is interesting because um, for holidays, people feel like they have to do everything to get their achievements or to yeah. get their items or to get their titles. But for, ho for the micro holidays, Blizzard is deliberately designing it so you don't feel forced to do them. Yes. Like, there's no transmog sets. There's no title. Like... I mean, it's, it's basically if you want to enrich yourself in the game and, you know, just do something relaxing and want to have sort of an unexpected fun interaction with other players, you know, you, you should head out to Silithus and just group up with players for fun and, you know, go do, just go do something that's not, you know, high stress like a yeah. raid or requires skill. You can just, you know, have fun and, you know, race someone and... It's not you about know, maybe completionism. go back into an old raid and you'll be like, oh, I just happened to get a pet. That's cool. And, you know, I learned something new about the game. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of the, per the point of them, but I think, is to make the world feel larger and yes. um, get people in, uh, engaged with parts yeah, of Azeroth. Yeah, that have been forgotten about. Get, yeah, like, I mean, the game's been around so long and, yeah, like, Legion is not really, you know, giving you motivation to go back to, like, you know, Pandaria or Wrath or Burning Crusade. So I think these micro events are meant to help people rediscover things yes. instead of a non-stressful mandatory. Event. Absolutely. It's, and, and that's the big thing about no rewards. And I still would argue that I feel like some sort of rewards would be nice, just even if they were extremely small. Or, I, I, and I understand there's always going to be people that are going to be there's nothing you're going to ever be able to do in World of Warcraft to, like, stop completionists. But um, in the same sense, for something like the Silithus event that is so big, it would just be nice if there was something small that was, you know, just a pet or, like, a toy or something that was just little. And maybe maybe the toy or the pet would be the something, the small effort thing. Uh, so that if, you know, right. if people were just there for that thing, they could get their thing and leave. But it, I, I just, I would love to see a small reward. But then I also understand why they don't have the rewards. Yeah. Um, so this is actually an interesting discussion. A few people asked, what is the best way for players that have been busy or IRL since Legion's launch to get caught up in how? And someone was like, yeah, I'd love to know your strat for getting caught up because I'm way behind and I couldn't play for a while. One doesn't play well for a few days and feels like the expansion is over. Oh, I don't, I, I disagree. Is, I think what they meant by expansion over, meaning like, like they like they feel like they can't catch up. That that's that's what I took so, it as. If people are yeah, like, no, no, and I, I like I don't know how to catch up. Well, I feel like with the changes to artifact power in seven point one five, you can get to level fifteen very quickly if you've fallen behind in that way. Or say you're someone like I know a, a lot of hunters are having a real uh, conundrum with the changes <laughs> made to their class. And if, if you are wanting to switch to an all right now, you can instantly bring your alt up to level 25 artifact knowledge, uh, which of course, those are the big things that people are talking about feeling behind. And I think that when you are trying to catch up in World of Warcraft, the absolute best thing that you can do is make sure that you're completing your emissary quests, make sure that you're getting your missions and you're doing your um, the upgrades in your artifact, in your order hall, and kind of focusing on those little things. Don't feel like, because I am someone I raid uh, three nights a week. I'm not in a super progressive raid group. We're just kind of like my guild has a crazy group that they're like ah, and they're like pushing and they're doing mythics and they're like really doing a lot. And um, oh, I'm sorry, you are correct. That is, if you are level 25, you can instantly get to level 20. My mistake. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm someone who I I don't really like mythic plus dungeons. I I know that there's something about it that a lot of people like. It's very competitive. It's quick. You're in a smaller group, and it's you know this kind of hard content. But I think the most important thing when you're trying to catch up in Legion and you're looking at the scale of the content, and you're like, oh my god, there's so much to do. I'm so overwhelmed. Is to remember that the game is not made to be completed. That's not how this game works like do not feel like if you haven't done Karazhan that you're never going to catch up or if you haven't done right. a mythic 12 you're not going to be able to catch up like you can certainly catch up without doing those things and um, definitely take advantage of the looking for group finder there's going to be people in the same position as you I know Suramar is one that when people fall behind in Suramar that's tough because it's phased so it's like your friends who are ahead of you can't really help you which while we're here if anybody from Blizzard is watching there should be an option to phase back to help your friends 
That is my yeah. biggest want in World of Warcraft right now. My friend plays World of Warcraft. I'm way ahead of her. I would love to go help her with her Suramar quest. Suramar is a tough place to quest by yourself, especially when you're in world quest gear that's 840 as opposed to, you yeah. know, what a lot of people are wearing. I would yeah. love to be able to phase back to whatever she's in. If she's the party leader, I would love to see her phase instead of mine. That, yeah, but... I also had a few more thoughts um, when you mentioned world quest. Sure. So, um... You know, if someone's like, oh, I've been busy since Legion launched, like, what do I do? Um, you know, like, some people might be curious that don't even have plans to really raid that seriously, that are just sort of like, you know, how do I get to 110, or like, what are the few things I should do? And, I mean, I think it's important to remember that you can sort of play at your own pace in Legion. Yes. So if you want to get the item level of your gear quickly, you know, you can just sort of focus on world quests, um... You know, like, if, if you haven't been really playing since Legion's launch came out, you don't need to, like, be like, oh, my gear needs to be perfect for this raid because, you know, you've already missed, like, you know, four months of Legion. Um, but I would just say, you know, you can do world quests. Um, you can, um, you know, if you're doing Suramar, keep in mind that um, you can Arcway and Court of Stars will become heroic in the future. Um, if you have alts, there's ways to have things be easier for alts, like artifact knowledge catch, catch up, as well as some attunements being account-wide. Um, and also just like the mindset of catching up, like if there's, you know, decide what you really want to do um, in Legion. So, you know, if you want to raid, you might focus on certain things, but you shouldn't have to feel compelled, like, you know, it's like you have to do Karazhan. Like, there's a lot of little fun things you can do, like there's this cool, like, battle pet meta achievement. There are tons of artifact appearances you can, um, collect for fun. You know, there are all sorts of mounts. There's like this epic, you know, Cosmoth uh, mount you can summon. You know, there's like a hippogriff. There are rare spawns. There's there's toys. You know, there's profession quests yeah. you can do. So I think like part of it's the mindset as well. Like decide what you want what to do. What does catching because, up mean to you? Yeah, because like if you feel like, like if you're going to compare yourself to someone that's been playing since the start that has a lot of time to do everything, you're always going to feel sad that you're not achieving what you want but you know like reflect back on what you I, like doing in past expansions and you know focus on that first yeah i really want to respond to something in chat someone said if there was phasing backwards players would carry each other in power level and a 110 would get carried through suramar you know a 100 get carried through suramar by 110 they wouldn't yeah. Number one, Suramar, you can't even pick up the quests until you're 110, so like yeah. that's not possible. What I'm talking about is my friend is level 110, I'm level 110, and I have finished the Suramar storyline. She's on like the second rung of it, and she's been struggling to do it by herself, and I would love to group up with her and so that we could do the quest together, and because it's a phased area, I can't even help her if I'm not on the quest, because I can't see the mobs. I'm not... It would also be fun to just take new people through the city, because you can get lost there pretty easily. Yeah, so it's, it's a like, really... Oh, like it's an area that most people who are caught up on all their Suramar quests did not do the entire thing solo. Lots of people got in groups right. and stuff, and what I'm suggesting is that you be able to yeah. go to the lowest person in the group's phase so that you know you can help your guildies and you can help your friends. It's not about carrying, it's just that's not an area that I even really feel like Blizzard intended to be a solo area. Yeah. So, continue. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just really wanted to address that. Uh -oh. Um, You know, I mean, just basically... I think just by sort of my comments on mindset um, were it. Um, another topic, I guess, I'm not sure if the person was asking this, but if people are like, oh, like, how do I get caught up? Like, what do I do? Like, what are the main things at 110? Um, you know, like I would say, I would say World Quest. You want to start doing Suramar. Do World Bosses. You want to, yeah, do the World Bosses. You want to, you know, work on your class order hall campaign so you get your third um, artifact relic slot. Um, you can start doing dungeons, um, if you have friends that raid all the time, they might talk about doing Mythic Plus, but you don't have to do them regularly, no. but, you know, the dungeons are really cool, so you might want to do them if you haven't stepped into them. It's certainly um, helpful if you yeah. can do one Mythic Plus that's with your, um, whatever your skill level is, if you're actually yeah. trying to get gear as part of your, you know, as part of your, this is what I want to do, pay attention to what those weekly events are, a lot of times they reward gear or bonus rolls or artifact power. Yeah, exactly, like the um, weekly events are, like, meant to you know, have you experienced something new? So, you know, do the weekly event, and if you like that type of content, you know, you can do 
more in that vein. And if you're like, ah, maybe yeah. the arena weekend isn't for me, then, you know, you don't do it. Learn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, too, is, um, you know, even like holidays, like Love is in the Air, that's going to drop something that's a piece of gear that's going to be worthwhile for right. people who have fallen behind. So mostly don't, I mean, you need to define what catching up means to you. And then you need to remember that there you don't have to do everything and you don't try not to feel overwhelmed by how much there is available. Because I feel like, you know, this was, this was, we see very much the opposite in Legion than we did in Warlords of Draenor. There's so much to do that people who have eight hours a day to play aren't necessarily doing everything. So don't feel like yeah. you need to do everything because you don't. You absolutely do not. You don't need to do everything to even be at a relevant, like right now, like I I'm, I think my eye level is like 880 or 882, something like that. And, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not, I've done a handful of Mythic Dungeons in my life because it's just not content. I really I think it's very stressful. I am a healer. That is a lot for me. No no, thank yep. you. I could do it. I just don't like it. It's, it's yeah. just a high anxiety you, thing for me. So yeah. I don't do do I also what you find say fun. That, I mean, also just another angle of being caught up. Um, you know, if you're unsure about the story with Legion and you're like, what's going on? Like, what are all these new characters? I would, um, you know, playing, watching the cinematics, playing through the Broken Shore. Read um, the quests. Yeah, read the quests. <laughs> Um, you know, like, you can do the starting artifact questline for a few specs because um, each specialization has a special questline, yeah. and all of them put together form the composite story of Legion. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, like, play a few different classes and, you know, see the plot from a few angles and, you know, work through the questing and try to finish the zones because each zone has this really interesting story moment going on that, you know, explains why you are actually there <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i think the biggest thing though with catching up is defining what catching yeah. up means to you and then focusing on the things that would help with that because if it's just a matter of wanting to get uh what's the what's the achievement called when you uh it's the, when you get all the quests done it's lore master yeah if you if you're looking yeah. to get legion lore master you know like that's something that you yeah. can you're looking at doing quests, obviously, and being a completionist and finishing all the quests and gathering the treasures or whatever. But you, I think the biggest thing is just to try to scope in and, you know, zero in on what exactly your goal is. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it for questions. All right. And um, I have to get back to PTR yes. stuff. There's probably even more stuff sure. going on now that the realms are up. So hopefully we'll have pet battle stuff up soon. Maybe some more models. Who knows? Who knows? And um, yeah, Call of the Scarab is live in EU at the time of filming. Um, we'll be live in the US very soon. Yes. Lunar Festival is coming. It is. Uh, Nighthold, Mythic, and First Wing LFR Tuesday. Lots of things going on. Um, but you know, I think that's good for the game. Um, Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, before we do go, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming and watching us live today. We had a ton of viewers and a lot of you guys stuck around for that 20 minutes in the beginning with technical issues. And I really personally appreciate that. Uh, if you do want to catch us live in the future, maybe you are watching on YouTube or maybe you caught the stream a little late. We stream every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, generally, we're more on time than we were today. Uh, yeah. We always upload the VODs to YouTube that evening as well. So if that is something that you would like to watch, please do so at youtube.com slash wowhead. We'll also embed it the next day at wowhead.com. Thank you so much to all of our Twitch subscribers and the people who follow us and watch us live. Thank you to everybody who subscribes and watches us on YouTube. And a big, big thank you to everybody who subscribes to Wowhead Premium, which is a premium service. It costs $1 a month and the cost goes down the more months you buy it once. It removes all of the ads from Wowhead sites. It allows you to uh, customize your Today on the Broken Isle. It allows you to talk in a special color and it supports Wowhead directly, and it will remove ads on both mobile and desktop as long as you're logged in. So thank you so much to everybody who chooses to support Wowhead that way. We will see you next week with a new Wowhead Weekly. In the meantime, please enjoy Nighthold, and uh, be sure to check out all of the developing 7.2 patch notes at wowhead.com. We will yep. see you next week, guys. Have a great weekend, and that's yep. all the things. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.